professionalinvestor.com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's day of the brief. Uh, this is our free broadcast for the public. Uh, it's supposed to be 15 minutes. And one thing I will say is Chris does come on at the 15 minute mark and go, Brian, shut the fuck up. Uh, almost, uh, I mean, literally almost every show. So uh, he's doing exactly what I asked him to do. <laughs> the only problem is Brian doesn't listen. Oh, God. I remember JoJo told me. You can make a positive difference in this world, but the one thing you have to do is learn how to listen, Brian. Damn, I'm terrible at that. Anyway, I uh, hope you get some good value out of the offering. Always exciting uh, coming in and checking with the public. I should probably scooch forward and try and talk as closely into the microphone. At some point, we're going to get one of these hanging microphone things that sticks in your face here. And the audio will be a hell of a lot better. I do appreciate that. In fact, actually, I've got the arm. It's just really a question of, Chris, can you just tell uh, maybe in the video room, this is the microphone I want Brian to get. Uh, so please place the purchase order. And then maybe uh, I could just say, uh, Julian, can you go ahead and pull the trigger? And maybe that that's that'll get that thing going. Or at least maybe give me like an Amazon link or something. And I suppose this is the last place in the world I should be having this conversation, right? <laughs> oh, well, you know, one thing I've said repeatedly of late is that um, I do this for the sport of it. Um, I could go and just sit in a prop firm's uh, trading uh, lounge and just simply uh, chat away with them. Um but I love uh, I love what we're doing here at TRI. I actually think we're making a positive difference in this world. And actually, uh, somebody who's in the lounge here uh, with me um, today, um, a husband and wife team, and I'm so proud of them. You know, good Canadians, good solid people, good quality people. I know they have the heart in the right place. They're not going to screw people over. I mean, that's basically why I do this. You know, like Cheryl on the weekend, you always hear me talking to her, um, you know, through uh, the Broiler Chicken show, um, you know, uh, uh, Liz and Jimmy down there in Sacramento. I mean, this is the reason why I do this is for these people, not not for your, you know, 20 year old Gucci wearing sweater doofuses who uh, happen to, you know, either, you know, maybe they've done like a work contract or something. And they've got like 10, 20 G's just sitting around. And they're just, it's just burning a hole in their pocket and they, they're just, you know, they're, they're reaching for anything they can. And I suppose nowadays, you know, those contracts are like 50 G's, hundred G's kind of idea. And they'll go and blow $5,000. Like they're not even, you know, it's like a hooker or something. So, um, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this intro, but I, I do this for the sport of it. I do this for the fun of it. I do it because I enjoy this. Uh, and hopefully you hear it in my voice. I mean, some days it's awfully tough to get motivated and going, but on balance, hopefully we're making a positive difference in this world. And, you know, being consistently profitable as a trader is not easy whatsoever. Uh, this is a difficult job. Um, takes incredible amounts of patience and discipline. And probably the most important thing out of all of this is you just can't get sucked into the public nonsense hype. If you do, it's a potion for losing money. So anyway, all right. So it is 12 minutes past the top of the hour. We got a little, you know, two or three minute, I don't know, maybe five minute uh, intro rant. Let's see if we can uh, give you some at least quality summary of what the hell the Beamish is seeing in the market here. And uh, let's try and wind this uh, free broadcast up by say that the bottom of the hour here, uh, yeah, we'll give you 17 minutes. We'll be generous today. So here we go. Uh, first things first, of course, today being Friday, TGIF, that in itself, if you are a day trader, uh, should sort of uh, give you a little bit of pause, a little bit of caution, a little bit of Oh, I better cool my jets. Uh, so here we are. Uh, 
Friday, uh, the 5th of April, 2024. Big non-farm payrolls report coming out here. Uh, first thing this morning, the jobs report uh, for, I think, February. Um, and interestingly enough, it came in staggeringly stronger than uh, what was expected. I'm not quite sure why we have the Bitcoin chart on there. Uh, there we are, back to our screen. Um, and so I always start the day, of course, uh, with uh, a good look at the econs, what's coming down the pike. Uh, and today being jobs report day, oh boy, be damn careful here, folks. Uh, market can be very, very screwy. So uh, interesting how the Canadian unemployment rate ticked up dramatically. Uh, employment, Canada actually lost jobs. I think I, I had actually a very long conversation with uh, a government sort of, you know, bureaucrat, if you will, you know, the people that basically run Liam's healthcare program. And I tried to explain to them that Canada is actually a short. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, fear, greed cycles, the whole thing, nine yards. Really shouldn't surprise us. I mean, the guy that's in charge of this country has completely fucked this country up. I mean, you, you couldn't script a better way to set a country up for failure uh, than what this idiot has done over the past probably about four or five years, literally since Canada actually went through its topping cycle. Uh, so ironically enough, the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, you really should not have touched Canada. We went through the sickness. Everything got absolutely completely overblown. Uh, and now we're living in an absolute disaster scenario where we have hyperinflation all over the place. The value of the currency is collapsing. And one of these days, I tell you, Canada is going to wake up and they're going to see their currency is down like 5%, 10% in like one day. You know, uh, George Soros was famous uh, for shorting the British pound through the late uh, 70s, early 80s. Uh, and he made an absolute fortune when it finally buckled under all the pressure. Um, ironically enough, it was shortly thereafter that the socialists were run out of power in Britain and uh, Maggie Thatcher, conservative, came in and you know sort of changed the entire uh, sort of landscape of the British investing and sort of uh, politi it's political world. It's fascinating how the conservatives are in power. And what really bugs me, I don't quite understand this, is the guy who actually kicked off the whole Brexit thing. He was prime minister then. He's actually the secretary of defense or something over there now. He has never left government, even though he completely fucked his country with that whole Brexit thing. It's fascinating how he, he still has a job in government there. So it just goes to show, you know, what is a career politician? You could completely fuck your country and still be have a nice cushy job in government 10, 15 years later. It's, it's shocking how this world is working here. Anyway, Britain's aside, uh, talking about China, uh, you can start to see there, there, there are cracks developing in the China D's um, uh, model. Um, and I might even argue that the, the jerk has gone and uh, introduced a massive tax increase right across the board. And industry has even said in the face of these uh, tax increases, there is no way in hell they're going to be hiring any new employees. There is no way in hell business is going to be expanding in this communist utopia uh, where the government that does absolutely nothing turns out to be the biggest employer. I mean, that doesn't work, folks. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see how the China D story plays out. But it is interesting to see that China actually lost jobs this past report in the face of the United States just having an absolute staggering employment report. I mean, when was the last time you actually saw a government report? I mean, I suppose this is fudged because the guy who's actually in power right now would like to keep his job. It'll be interesting to see what the revisions are going forward. But what I found fascinating about this is actually, if you dig into the report, not only was this an extremely bullish report, but we actually had 
um, uh, revisions to the January data. So the January data was actually, so employment in January and, for, for, and February combined 22,000 uh, higher than previously reported. So not only was this jobs report strong, but even the previous reports were revised higher. I've said repeatedly that, you know, since 2018, I am a U.S. dollar bull. And I told this government bureaucrat yesterday, I said, you know, I have all my money outside of Canada. There is no way in hell I'm keeping my money here in Canada. This is a potion for disaster here. I am uber bullish of the United States of America, which, of course, you know, anybody who doesn't like the United States, you know, and hates the hegemony and all that kind of stuff, they hate hearing that. But, you know, cycles are cycles. I'm not going to fight this shit. The U.S. economy is insanely uber strong. And, you know, the irony of it all, of course, is the labor market always moves last. So, you know, when this thing does top out, look out below. Uh, but, you know, show me a higher high. Show me new high and I'll show you something, right? Uh, and, you know, I might even argue this 303. You'd have a low there, then 303 then a higher low here with this guy here, and boom, 303. Hmm, interesting, that's the same number. But uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if this is revised higher down the road as well. But anyway, uh, this is, and, you know, the irony of it all for the stock market sort of pundits and stuff, uh, this is ironic because there is no way in hell the Fed can actually lower interest rates in the face of this. This is a very strong economy. Uh, you know, I'm sure lots of people, like I said a couple of times here, are going to be like, well, these numbers are all a lie because Biden's fixing the whole fucking thing to, to win the next election, blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is, it is. But there's no way in hell the Fed can lower rates in the face of that. But at the same time, too, what this does mean is that the economy is strong. And if you have high interest rates, relatively speaking, that actually means that the economy is booming. So from a weird perspective, I, I mean, you know, the stock market is always a leading indicator. And I think it's important that we remember that. So, you know, I wouldn't, you know, we look at sort of the broader picture here. Um, you can see stocks are actually relatively okay here. They're not really breaking down in earnest. Uh, bonds, you know, as we sort of said there, I can't see how they're going to lower interest rates anytime soon. That looks like uh, lower highs and lower lows just on the day. It is interesting how, you know, through sort of Fed speakers and stuff yesterday, the market took a real punch in the nose. Um, and I get the impression, I mean, I didn't hear exactly what the Fed speaker said. I think uh, Chris said that uh, it was uh, one of the Karkashian, what's that, what's his name again? Sorry, Chris, I always get his name wrong, because secretly I don't like the guy. But anyway. Fed Cash Carry, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Cash Carry, thank you, sir. Uh, kind of threw a wet blanket on the market. Um you know, I guess the way that I would look at it is, you know, simply put, the two-year bond actually follows sort of like your market expectations with regard to things like short-term interest rates. And you can see that they are working their way lower. I think the whole market kind of got jawboned there at the end of February into thinking, oh, the Fed's going to lower rates, Fed's going to lower rates. Ironically enough, if we just think market structure... This was a V bottom. So we do know that at some point that V bottom is going to have to be tested. And lo and behold, what letter of the alphabet do you see happening here? So we are getting lower highs and lower lows here on the uh, on the interim. So I would expect this low to be tested at the very least. Um, and we got to start seeing some actual economic data that actually says that the economy is uh, weakening and softening. When I look at the bond market here, I see just a whole bunch of potential M's here and the two-year note actually coming out, which to me says that the economy actually is still booming. And of course, that means interest rates are heading higher. Now, you know, the question here is, uh, do we have any anecdotal evidence from, say, the commodities markets? Have you heard the Beamish talking about things like energy prices? And if energy prices are heading higher, then usually that means that that's inflationary. And again, how can you lower interest rates in the in the face of insanely high inflationary pressure? You can't. So 
you know, show me a new high and I'll show you by that. That crude oil looks like it's still pointing higher. And it's interesting. We have blown through 2.618s here. So, I mean, next stop, we got a tag uh, uh, 4669s, which would just be nothing more than a test of this old previous high. Seems logical to me. So, again, I don't know where you can possibly justify seeing lower interest rates. And I think what's happening here to a certain degree is um, the Fed is trying to talk the market in a certain direction. There you go. So uh, actually we hit. No. OK, well, I said I was going to do to the bottom uh, half of the hour. So we still got about six minutes to finish off this rant. Um, I will say kind of interesting uh, side point, if you will. Uh, as we said in the stock market, we took a bit of a punch in the nose uh, the other day, uh, yesterday. Uh, and I think that was on that Kashkari's uh, comment. I don't know whether this is a valid ICG setup kind of idea, blah, blah, blah. But it is interesting how they broke the previous bullish structure, uh, higher highs and higher lows, blah, blah, blah. And actually, they even did it over here. This was a really pretty one. Broke the previous structure, counter trend rally into 61.8. Uh, good old mountain man. And look at this beautiful top and kaboom. <laughs> So the kaboom, of course, uh, set up more market structure breaks. And you could argue, you know, this is one of your, look at that, you can see them battling back and forth. Okay, there's some value here. There was a battle up here. There's some value up here. So this is just a big ass, one of these value gaps. I don't know whether it's such a good idea taking a $200 risk on a micro contract, but I'm paper trading today. Today's Friday, so I said, what the hell? Just for demonstration purposes, I don't think I would take such a big trade, a uh, big risk on a Friday. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I just want to see how this plays out. Uh, my hunch is it probably works. Uh, it is interesting how we're coming into another Fed speaker here uh, right at 9.15. So I guess they just took the podium. Uh, we'll see whether they mess around with the market. I would probably also say, and in the after party, we'll do this because we're running out of time here uh, in this free broadcast. It'd be interesting to go over to the, uh, you know, just for fun, I'll just show you what we do, but I'll get into it in the after party. I go over to, I always like looking at bar chart. I think they have the best options summary uh, for the market. But if we just popped in here, I would look at uh, the S&P uh, uh, depository receipts, the spiders. This is basically the biggest and oldest ETF around if you're an ETF fan. Holy crap, did you just see that? Uh, what the hell happened here? Uh, and actually, I even noticed this. What is this? This is a three-month chart. What pattern is that one bar right there? Holy crap on a stick. This is actually why I really like looking at bar charts because you can really see that pattern in glorious Technicolor. Actually, it's interesting because yesterday I even tweeted out a darling of the market spat out one of these uh, charts uh, patterns. And actually, interestingly enough, uh, you know what? This is another thing that we should probably do in the after party is we should go look at that darling stock. I actually put it out in Twitter and I would, I like to quiz the audience. What, what stock is this? Are you paying attention? People did uh, mention uh, the, the correct name of the stock. And if it actually confirms this chart pattern, same thing as the SPY, if it confirms this pattern, oh boy, all hell's going to break loose. But this chart pattern, for whatever it's worth, is not confirming. So if, ever, if anything, and I even said, like, uh, is, is Druckenmiller paying attention to this? He should, uh, of course, because he was touting NVIDIA longs there a million dollars lower. Be interesting to see whether he's squaring up, but the uh, the actual particular chart pattern hasn't uh, validated here. Mm -hmm. What I was curious about, and what we should probably do in the after party, is uh, circle back around and see what they're going to do with this options expiry. It's a weekly one, so it's not that significant, but nonetheless, the option open interest will give us a really good idea of where Wall Street wants this market to go out. Um, okay, we'll finish off this free broadcast with a couple minutes uh, left here. Eh, obviously, uh, this audience is slightly crypto uh, centric, so not a bad idea to check in there. Um, I would say that the weekly price chart on Bitcoin, nothing has changed here. About now, what is this? One, two, three, four weeks ago, a month ago, 
uh, we've started to establish this trading range. We talked about this as a funny high up here, 73,794. Still think that that has to be taken out. I do not think that you will print an all, a, a long-term top with a crazy number like that. Uh, bottom end of the range, uh, 60,760, uh, um, I guess. I can't see. Uh, it's awfully small print, 760, yeah. Um, so we've just been banging around in this range. And I think that that's really the hallmark of this market right now. And interestingly enough, if you did a 50% level, what is the point of the trading range? I'd say we're pretty damn close to that 50% level right now. Of course, we have a huge fundamental event coming up here, the happening event. So really on balance, you know, if you look at previous years happening events, how does the market act heading into this event? Actually, this is just business as usual, folks. I really don't see anything totally crazy. Um, I would say that we have a huge event coming up here on Monday. I think it's Monday. The solar eclipse. And the whole world is literally going to stop, especially here in North America, because it is primarily a North American event. Um, and, you know, there's places in my country where they're actually declaring a state of emergency for this like give me a break oh these damn bureaucrats they're just such idiots i remember back when i was in grade school there was a uh, there was a solar eclipse and nobody hell i remember it, you know the weather was crappy and i remember actually going outside and it was snowing out and we couldn't see the eclipse but it was like no big deal i mean it was just sort of like wow well, just another day in life no now in this woke Social media, fucking people staring at their screens 24-7, completely immersed in this, this social media idiocy. God, if anything, I think this social media thing is the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen to humanity. Um, now governments are actually saying things like, oh, we've got an event coming up here, so we need to, this has to be, a, uh, we got to somehow inject ourselves into this equation and in front of everybody's faces, or we're going to call a state of emergency to justify our salaries and whatever. But anyway, I would just say the point of the matter here is that it is an event. I do think that the entire market is sort of pivoting through this event. Um, and just be careful, right? I wouldn't even be surprised, to be perfectly honest with you, you see the trend line here. I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin goes up and actually takes out this old high here into that solar eclipse. It would not surprise me. You know, for those people that are trading the market, we actually had a pretty sick short trade location that came in yesterday. I think I've told you, I've been short this market since this double top. And anyway, it was just an absolutely incredible sell level there. Uh, it took some profits on the big initial dump. Market actually put in a half decent bottom and then actually rallied up into an alt ABCD level. This original man, you've seen me trading the mountain level with that ICT guys uh, set up. And wow, what a freaking trade location. Holy Shiite Muslim. And what was fascinating about this was, uh, whoops, uh, what have I done? Uh, was um, the indicators all actually started to set up the trade. So you can see momentum went into divergence. Willie was stupidly overbought. So you had location, you had indicator confirmation. If you could have any reason to get short, off of that level there, beautiful trade. Just absolutely textbook. And maybe you just shorted the double top and boom, 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 down she goes. Need to take some profits? You probably should have. Uh, I think as I've told you, I've been short here since this top and I'm just working my runner right now. The stop is at scratch and I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. And I don't think it's in any of your business to go into the business of predicting what's going to happen. We're here to hunt setups. Everything, if the criteria of the trade comes in, your setup, take the trade, act appropriately, take some nice profits when you can, move your stop to scratch on runners. I don't know. This thing might just melt down and break down and fall apart. And this little thing turns into a monster trade. You just don't know in this game. But it's not your business to predict what's going to happen. Your business is to hunt setups and just put yourself into a position. Like I say, 
in the little intro here, just put yourself into a position, give yourself permission to get rich. And this is a perfect example of that. I will officially give myself permission just to let this position work and do its thing. I'm not going to get into its way with my opinion, because usually your opinion is actually wrong, <laughs> which is so sad about this game. So anyway, slow and steady wins a race. Um, I, if we're lucky, we're still just going to remain in this trading range uh, through the whole Eclipse event. There might be some craziness here. And ironically enough, if we do actually pop up to new highs, as soon as we get any kind of indication that the market's overbought and we've gone into divergence, well, then I'll probably be hunting a brand new short. So slow and steady wins a race. Don't take no wooden nickels. Just go, you know, put yourself into a position of strength. Um, uh, And if you don't know what that means, if you don't know how to do that, maybe consider joining our education program. That's the whole reason why I built it. Try and make a positive difference in this world. That's why I'm here. So uh, God bless to all of you. I love you, Joe John. I miss you so fucking much. Just please help me and Liam as much as you can. And I'll just keep being an agent of best practices and trying to make a positive difference in this world. It's all I can do. Hugs and kisses, all the best. We'll see you over in the after party. I was a little bit over, gave you a little extra time today on the free broadcast. BMA for the win. Love you all. I'll just keep doing this until the good Lord decides it's my time. And like I said, hopefully I can make a positive difference in this world. All right, everybody. All the best. And we'll see you in the after party. Bye for now.